Hello and welcome to the Plumes of Oz, where today we're going to look at another Australian bird in the wild. This is one of the iconic cockatoos, the red-tailed black cockatoo. When the tail of this cockatoo is fanned out, the red will show, either with black barring or as panels within the lateral retrices of the tail. The female has more orange colour. Banding is found in the female and the red panels in the male. Juveniles are more like the female with an orange colour. Sometimes in a very young bird, it will be more yellow compared to the orange tail of the female or the bright red male. And though we think of these birds as being black, when you look carefully at the feathers, you can see a little bit of rufous colour. And the younger the bird is, so it seems, there may be more allomelanin, or the reddish, causing a slight muddy colour to the black. Here, the bird on the left that's making the begging noises is the juvenile. The male on the right, you can just see the lateral recesses with the red stripe. The female with the back to us, we can't really see the undertail. But the young and the female both have significant yellow spots over the body. Young red-tailed black cockatoos are altricial, totally dependent on their parents, and they are fed by regurgitation from the adults. Here the female in front and the male with the bright red panels behind. Again, a female. Now a juvenile, probably a female with all the white spots, but the tail has that orange colour. A downy look at the back of the neck is perhaps a giveaway for a juvenile bird. Cockatoos are cetaceiforms, in other words, those parrot looking like birds. And of the cetaceiforms, we then classify them down into the parrots and the cockatoos. The cockatoos are the cacatuidae, distinguished by having an erectile crest and making a raucous noise. In addition, the parrots have bright colours, whereas the cacatuidae are either white, black, or pastel. All cetaceiforms are seed eaters, and when we say that, you often think of grass seed. But the black cockatoo is more arboreal in its feeding pattern. A moment ago, we saw them eating the Davidson plum fruit, but the mainstay of their diet is eucalypt seed. This tree is a coolabar tree. It has the small eucalypt seed nuts, but also larger nuts. These are the fruiting bodies. And this is what the black cockatoo is after. Look at the way the crest projects forwards as he chews on this, what is called a ligno tuber. And in this case, it was a coolabar tree situated along the edge of the Darling River. And these are a delicacy for the red tail black cockatoo the way that crest is projecting forwards over the bill. Other cockatoos have crests that go straight up. Let's just go back to the Darling River edge and here the river gums grow and in addition the cooler bars are there and you can tell a cooler bar tree for if you get underneath it you can see these lignotubers and most of them have been broken open. The cockatoos have been feeding in the canopy These lignotubers have a hard casing, difficult to get open and get into the seed. Look, there are leaves attached to this one, showing the classical cockatoo feeding action of cutting off a sprig of leaves with the attached seed, and in this case, a lignotuber.
Try as I might, using my teeth to try and crack one of these seed pods open, I found it impossible, so I reverted to a small pocket knife. I managed to find the delicacy inside that the red-tailed black cockatoo likes. Some of the seed pods on the ground haven't been cracked open, but you can see that there is scarring of the casing, indicating a cockatoo has tried to chew through the shell without success. Now we are leaving New South Wales and heading up into North Queensland. And look at this flock of red-tailed black cockatoos. They are just an amazing sight to see. They are eating on seed in the eucalypts again. New South Wales, the largest flock I have seen is 20 birds. But here we have 500 birds. Heading west, coming to Darwin, we find this pair. They have a larger bill. The top end species can be separated from the New South Wales bird because of the bill size. The female red-tailed black cockatoo in the north also seems to have more yellow in the tail. The interesting thing with the feeding habits of these birds is the coolabar tree has a very similar distribution to the red-tailed black cockatoo, in particular along dry or wet river beds. However, I suspect this is a coincidental finding, for in the northern areas, they largely seem to feed on bloodwoods. Cockatoos constantly chew. Occasionally there is a reason, and that is the vibrations of moth larvae. The cockatoo feels the movement, chews on the wood, hoping to find this delicacy. And here in the Northern Territory, note the more yellow barring in the tail of this red-tailed black cockatoo. Into New South Wales, and here they are eating on fruiting seeds, eating the white cedar berries. Raising of a crest in black cockatoo is a little bit unpredictable. Most of the time it seems to be during feeding, other times when a mate is close by, when they are startled, sometimes on alighting on a branch. It's interesting when observing red-tailed black cockatoos how there is constant murmur and talk amongst the birds and I suspect auditory arousal can raise the crest. During flight, the crest is flat. Now I mentioned that grass seed feeding is a rare occurrence for the red-tailed black cockatoo but if we head up into the savanna grass of the top end, it certainly happens. And here you can see in Cape York these birds coming down to feed on sea. A notable difference from the Calypnorhynchus or the black cockatoos from the white or the pastel cockatoos is that they rarely dig for roots. The Galar sulphur crested Corella all dig into the ground under herbaceous plants looking for a tasty bulbous root. Leaving the northern savannah grasslands we will now return to the Darling River floodplain. And here, the cockatoos have just come in by the side of the road, foraging for food. When they alight, the crest is erect. They don't stop and dig, they just keep walking, putting their bill down to the surface every now and again, picking something up, chewing on it, and then moving a little bit further. They constantly walk. They all walk in the same direction, surprisingly. This might be an adaptation to the availability of food in this particular area. For the galahs do the same thing. Whereas if you go back into the savannah grass, movement was a little bit more random in different directions. This lemming type behavior of following one another and just putting the head down to the ground and feed is combined with foot action. They use the foot either to pick up something to eat or to hold it against the bill. For some of these seeds they are picking up are very fine. But the amazing thing about the cockatoo bill is that it can hold a very small seed right at the tip between the upper and lower mandible. Here on the ground we can see what these birds are foraging for. 
mostly dried herbaceous material. There is some residual dried flower. And as you can see, plants like this in the arid regions of Australia are full of prickles, thorns and burrs. And some of those thorns can go through the sole of a shoe. Most of it is what we would call double G and burr. I'm constantly amazed how these birds survive with this diet. It makes my throat sore thinking of swallowing. Like most cockatoos, the red-tailed black cockatoo is a playful bird, but being larger, it has more difficulty in maintaining balance, especially on small limbs at the periphery of a tree, but this is always where the eucalypt seed is. And here a group of red tails are feeding in a box eucalypt. It is not uncommon to see three red tail black cockatoos together. Two adults and one young. The reason for this is they usually only lay a single egg. Just look at this beautiful crest again. Amazing. And that red tail, it certainly is a bird that is on fire. This was a group of five birds in central Queensland. And you can see the playful nature of the red-tailed black cockatoo, constantly chasing one another. And as they do, they give their voracious calls. The crests go up and down. And in a typical citizen fashion, they are like lovebirds, doing aloe pruning, getting to spots where the single bird can't scratch the itch. Aloe pruning is not confined to a breeding pair. It is carried out within a small flock with other birds. Again in central Queensland, feeding on the red box eucalypt seed. The bill works in a very precise manner in combination with the tongue. The tongue surface is flat with minimal papilla and very muscular. Capable of precise manipulation of anything between the upper and lower mandible. And the last manipulator in feeding is the foot. Used either to get the food into the mouth or as an anvil on which the tip of the bill works. Again in New South Wales, a group of 15 birds. They were making quite a bit of noise and they were close to a dam. It was a hot day, the temperature was 34. This is in mid-September of 2023. So I set up a hide at a dam that was fairly close by and hoped that the birds were going to come in, for I'd never got a photograph of the red-tailed black cockatoo drinking. The first cockatoo to come in was the galah. Then the red-tailed blacks came in and roosted in one of the trees overlooking the dam. And it wasn't long before they came down to drink. As it is spring in Australia, and this is September 2023, and this flock of birds was not going along the river, where most of the river red gums have the large holes and the mature trees, the preferred breeding site for the red tail. So I suspect that a lot of the birds that we're looking at here in this group of 15 are immature birds, not into breeding mode yet. And you can see there's significant amounts of melanin, giving a slightly muddied appearance to the birds. Look at the flecks. I suspect there are more fleck birds 
suggesting more of these birds are immature, as it may take five years for a black cockatoo to become mature. Being a bird that inhabits the dry lands and eats dry seed, the cockatoo needs copious amounts of water. When they go into a breeding hole, they like it to be close to water, for they need water to aid the digestion of the dried seeds. And apart from dams, the other places where these birds will often congregate are around cattle troughs. A red-tailed bird, without a red tail, it's more yellow, and it's squawking, calling for a feed and a drink. Another one, here on the right-hand side. The tail is again yellow. Immature birds. Back in the Kimberley, look at the pale tail of the female as she flies in for a drink. And so this variation with tail colour, banding, bill size, gives us five subspecies of the red-tailed black cockatoo. A last trip back into the Kimberley to see this pair. Note again the large bill, giving an appropriate name for this northern subspecies, Macrorhynchus. Just to finish off, let's look at some other black cockatoos. If we go to WA, we can see these white tail birds. Note the redness in the periorbital area of the eye. This is present only in the male and makes sexual identification a lot easier. Back to the southeast coast of Australia, we have the yellow tailed black cockatoo. Again, the male having the red periorbital coloration and both sexes having a yellow cheek patch. A beautiful bird, well known for eating Banksia. Then we have the glossy black cockatoo. The female has both red and yellow. The male, only red. Here a female glossy is having a drink. The next black cockatoo, not that it's a Calyptorhynchus, but is the palm cockatoo. Note again how the crest is more vertical On behalf of Plumes of Oz, thank you for your support and we hope you will subscribe so we can bring you more videos of Australian birds in the wild.